All right, guys, I've been wanting to do a video where I show you dangerous things that you should never do in the shop. These are some things that you might see some people that are less concerned with safety doing in the shop. I just want to point them out to you, and I want to make it perfectly clear. You should never do these things in your shop. A miter saw, or commonly referred to as a chop saw from my era, is extremely dangerous, and there are a lot of things you shouldn't do on them. Let me show you one thing you should never do. A piece of material that is too wide to cut across. Don't ever do this. Don't ever do that. Don't ever cut the top first so that it doesn't fall off until you're ready. That's too risky. Don't do that. Sometimes you have a severe angle like this. Don't ever do what I'm about to do. It's too dangerous. Don't ever put a block of wood right here so that you could swing this out and support the back of a cut on a severe angle. Don't ever do this. Take the time to struggle and figure out how to cut that angle against the fence. If you need to make a shim, there's a couple of ways you should never do this, but I'll show you one, and then I'll show you a second way you should never make shims. Don't ever make a shim like that. It's too dangerous. See what I mean? That's too dangerous. Don't ever do that. This is a second way you should never make a shim. And if you never do it, make sure you never use a really long piece of wood. Remember, never do this, ever. One thing you should never ever do is cut curves on a table saw. Don't ever cut a curve on a table saw. And don't ever refine a curve on a table saw. 
It's too dangerous. Always use a saw stop, even when you don't do dangerous things. If you needed to put a groove in this piece of material, don't ever use a circular saw. You should use a CNC machine in a 3D program. Don't do this. If you had to make a notch for a pipe, go get a CNC machine and program that three-dimensional carve and do that. Don't do it this way. This is a six inch angle grinder. And typically when you use an angle grinder, you want the cut to go down so that the machine will pull away from you if it binds up. One thing you should never do is completely flip the guard all the way over so that now the blade will spin away from you so that when you make a cut all the sparks fly away from you. All the sparks should always fly right at you. Don't ever do it this way. Sparks will fly away from you and if it binds up it'll jump down like that. Let me demonstrate. Don't ever use the edge of your guard as a stopper. That's a guard, not a stopper. Let me show you what I mean. That's a guard, not a stopper. Don't do that. Never do a tactical drill tip change. You could break your wrist. Always take the time to do it slowly while everybody on the job site waits. That's how you do it. Sometimes when you're on a job site, you need a place to hang a string. If you're trying to go for a level line or something like that. You need a nail sticking out, but don't do what I'm about to show you. Don't do that. Instead, go find a baby food jar in your father's garage and find a loose 16 penny nail and nail it in with a traditional hammer. You don't want to pull the tip back on a nail gun and fire it part way in because that's too dangerous.
Never do what I'm about to do. Never put your angle grinder in a vise so that you can conveniently cut a piece of metal. Never do this. All kidding aside, if there's ever anything in the shop that makes you uncomfortable, don't do it. Find an alternative way to do it. You could always use the bandsaw in place of the chop saw, which would be a much safer alternative. You could always use a handsaw in place of a power saw. You could always use a hacksaw in place of an angle grinder. Don't do any of the things that I do.